This video is about Google Colab, which is a free Jupyter notebook-like environment that runs in the cloud. So if you want to watch the whole end-to-end -end walkthrough involving some GIS data specific to the city of Washington, I'll provide the link to that in the comments. Hope that you find this useful as you learn about Colab, Python, or GIS. Google Colab is a really cool tool. I don't know why it's not actually a lot more popular than it is. Colab is a very similar interface to Jupyter Notebook. It was developed collaboratively with the Jupyter Notebook team. Essentially, it is a virtual notebook that's run on a virtual machine. This can mean that your files are very temporary when you upload them to Google Colab but it gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of power to collaborate with your teammates because you know that they'll have the same basic setup that you do in terms of having their own virtual machine that already comes with a bunch of essential packages installed. Let's jump into the activity. We are now in Google Colab, and I mentioned that this is a virtual environment on a virtual machine. So one of the great things about Google Colab is that the virtual environment, it isn't a blank slate. It actually comes with a lot of packages pre-installed that you would need in order to work with data. I'm gonna explore that now using the pip command. It mirrors the functionality of a Jupyter notebook. We can write to the terminal using this exclamation point and type pip freeze to see all the packages that are on this virtual machine. And then to run a cell, you can press control and enter. You can see alphabetized all the packages in the package versions. Let's go up here and we'll find pandas. This is quintessential to working with Python. Some of the geospatial packages are kind of more specialty packages, so we'll need to install those. We can press this button here to minimize the output of this cell and add a new code block. While this cell is running, I'm going to talk through what this code does. So this first line you might not be familiar with if you're usually a pip user, but the apt-get command is specific to the Linux environment. That is the system Lab is mirroring. You're running on a virtual Linux server. Yeah, so it's going out and it's getting this package, which is a dependency for our tree. An R tree is a dependency for GeoPandas, and this package, our tree, is what enables geospatial join, which we'll see here in a minute. Everything has successfully downloaded. Next, we're going to bring in the packages that we'll be using for this demo. So we have pandas, geopandas, shapely, and our tree. I also like to set the max columns to none. This way you could visualize all the columns in a data frame. When you have a longer data frame with a lot of fields, I find that it's useful to be able to just scroll and see them all. So now we're going to set it up so that our Google Colab is interfacing with Google Drive as the file system for this notebook. Go here to click on the link. So what this does is it authorizes file sharing. And it'll give you a code that you then will paste back into the Google Colab notebook. I also want to set up a root file path so that we don't have to go typing in that information every time. If you set up your file structure the way that I did, then this variable should work fine when we go to import our data. Next up, we're going to import a file using GeoPandas. So this function will bring in the shape file for the planned unit developments as a geo data frame. What we're doing here is initializing a coordinate reference system. So this will tell GeoPandas how this shapefile interacts with other shapefiles. All right, so now let's take a look at the pod state geo data frame. Okay, so here it is. You can see the class is GeoPandas geo data frame, and then each of the columns in the data frame is listed here. 
and we have it as our last column this geometry type. This is what enables the geospatial manipulations and visualization. Let's say you're ready now to export a shapefile. What this code is doing is it's going to take our PUDS info geo data frame and it's going to transform it into the shapefile component components. So it gave us all of these five shapefile pieces and it put them here in this like file section. Uh, so it's kind of like in limbo right now. It's not in our Google Drive yet. To get it there, we're gonna write to the collab terminal and we're gonna say, okay, copy each of these shapefile components into Google Drive. So we'll put it into that viz folder. The reason I named it that is because if our goal is mapping, then we might want to stick this shapefile into an application like Tableau. That will enable us to create some really beautiful maps. Okay, so that's it in terms of the demonstration. Hopefully you liked it and you found it useful. And um, you can check out the blog on Medium. You can find my write-up at Nicole Janeway.